But you'd look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. This is part two of my video on the IBM 704 emulator. It'll describe how you can compile the emulator yourself using Free Pascal and the Lazarus IDE. But before we do that, some announcements. There's been a few updates to the archive on the on POS Hub. Uh, there's been errors in the scripts fixed. The tape viewer had a had a bug which has now been fixed as well. And the bit of mainframe folklore humour has been removed. Uh, it, it was that famous mock German notice about finger poking and spits and sparking that actually gave rise to the use of the term blinking lights. You can read up about it on um, Wikipedia or if, if you want. Uh, it was removed because it's perhaps a little bit culturally insensitive to our German friends and also probably inappropriate for this project, which is otherwise meant to be a serious thing. So, yeah, uh, it's been removed. And that as a result of uh, making these changes, to avoid having to download all the manuals each time, they've been moved to a separate archive because they're you know, 163 meg versus 6 for just the emulator stuff alone. Now th these manuals are all from bitsavers.org, which is a fantastic repository of all sorts of manuals, not just for 7094 and IBM, but all sorts of manufacturers. So it's well worth a visit. The manuals are included here just as a convenience. Uh, you can, if you don't want to, you can just ignore it, don't down download them and just get what you want from Bitsavers. In, in the first video, I didn't mention these extra scripts that have been included. So if we look in the scripts folder, these ones starting with example. Uh, they're there because if you wanted to compile your own programs, using these demonstration scripts as a model would... Um, well, they're not a very good model to work from. Th they call subroutines and they call other scripts and... There's even a problem with returning from scripts, which doesn't show up in the demos, but it might if you um, try and do much of it. So the, these scripts are here. They're just straight in line scripts. So if we look at, say, this one, which does the least squares example using Fortran 4. It, all this stuff here is pretty much needed for every job. The part that you might want to change would be in this text load area where you put in your own file for your Fortran source. Uh, $IB FTC indicates Fortran 4 uh, and you'd probably also want to, if you've got any data, you'd have a data card and in include your data file as well, followed by end of file marks. So th that's an example for using a, a Fortran 4 program. Uh, some sometimes some jobs will need to have you have to press start twice. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Look at the other examples, and if we look at uh, this one, this is an example of Fortran 2. Again, all this setup stuff, but it says dollar execute Fortran. That that indicates Fortran 2. Again. There's your file that you change the source for and an end of file mark. And this one only needs one press of start. So there you go. COBOL. Pretty straightforward. Again, exec no, dollar I, IB CBC is COBOL. Blah, blah, blah. There's your uh, source program. This one includes the data in the job because it's just a single card that that, that 1000 he doesn't even have a press start you just press load tape there you go there's another Fortran 4 example he also just has load tape now you'll work it out the revival of this project came about when Jim Failinger contacted me about uh, he had uh, ported the Delphi version of this project to Free Pascal and Lazarus and, and Jim did a lot of work on this back in the day in the early 2000s and he's done a, a lot more now with this uh, revival. He's 
also provided some notes on how to compile and install this thing with Lazarus. It's in the docs folder in readme7094 source. About halfway down somewhere. There's a bit of a description on uh, Delphi and Lazarus and then some notes on building from source using Lazarus. So I'll be using this as a guide and in the description that follows. Delphi is a great d development environment but it is absurdly expensive and it's, it's totally out of the question really for, for all but commercial users. So that wouldn't have helped any, anyone that wasn't uh, that didn't already have it to play with this emulator and that's what led Jim to use Free Pascal and Lazarus and th they got developed probably largely because of the expense of Delphi and uh, th they're very good. It's, it's often easy to forget that you're not using Delphi. So let's get started. First you want to download the emulator because then you'll get the notes that are included in that file I just showed you and then you want to get Lazarus which is at here. So let's grab that. This was being done on Windows 10 in uh, <coughs> on a slab of sort of a huge fat tablet with a square screen so things might look a bit odd. Uh, it's also a touch screen but I'm using a mouse and Windows 10, I, this is the only place I've got Windows 10, I don't use it very much so I really don't know what I'm doing. There'll be a lot of surprises like that update tab thing that just showed. And I'll grab the 64-bit installer. Okay, it's downloaded. I'm just going to install it, run, run the installer straight out of the downloads folder. What's it doing? Come on! This PC isn't uh, particularly fast, so <laughs> this has taken quite a while. Okay, that took ages to get started, and I suspect it's something to do with this anti-malware service executable. It's part of Windows 10. I've never seen it before. Uh, as I say, I. I I've barely used Windows 10, I don't know anything about it, so and I've actually downloaded it twice thinking it had stuck, but okay. So, English and yeah, take all the defaults. just noticed that uh, the archives I put on FOSS Hub, it, which is also something new to me, I don't think this is the first time I've used it, uh, I didn't explicitly indicate that this archive here is for manuals, I'll try and change that, but uh, for the moment, the big one is manuals, the little one is the program. If you want to know a bit more about Lazarus, you can compile to a whole host of platforms. Where did I see that? Yeah, Android, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, Windows, Web. Uh, if you look at the user ratings for Lazarus, 4.9 out of 5. 120 users gave it a 5. 4 gave it a 4 star and 3 people that obviously didn't know what they were dealing with. Yeah, we're still installing. And I also just realised that the executable that's built into the archive in the in FOSS Hub is for 64-bit machines so so another reason why you might want to compile it if you're running a 32-bit machine but 
that's all about to be revealed. Right, it's just about finished installing Lazarus. Still taking ages due to that anti-malware thing, I think. And this finalisation step is taking ages as well. And, and 50% CPU being used by this anti-malware service executable. <laughs> right, it looks like that thing is finally finished. And we have Lazarus installed there. Before compiling B709 Poor, you have to install its components. And I'll just demonstrate. These blinking lights up here and a few other things are specialised components and if you try and compile this program before those components have been installed, you'll get errors. So let's uh, do that first, following Jim's instructions again. Right, to install the components first, we fire up Lazarus. And it's opening a default project, we'll just get rid of that. And make sure that the, go to view, make sure that the messages window is visible. Then go to, we're going to go into the build folder of this thing. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Okay, that's in Explorer. Now go to packages, open package file, and I'm just going to grab that thing there. So click that select B709 CMPS make sure register unit is checked do compile and we've got success there in the messages and it's created a lib subfolder so the uh, components package has been installed and then sorry it's been compiled then we go to use install and it's actually going to rebuild Lazarus, because Lazarus itself is written in Pascal. So we'll let it run. And Lazarus has rebuilt itself and restarted itself. Once again, get rid of the default project that comes up. And we can now open our project. So file open and we go look for it's not showing extension so we're looking for the LPI file which I'm guessing is this one Lazarus project information open the project yes thank you and there it is so what do we do? We just uh, do a build, I guess. Compile it. We go to run build. And we get all these messages down here. And hopefully it'll say success. There we go. So we should be able to actually just run it now. Oh, and there it is running beautiful so that's it get out, let's get out of Lazarus Quick. and if we look in our in directory we'll have a application that was just compiled now 144 p.m. that's correct so we run it and there we there it is going now not not all the windows are visible here because of the reduced screen area on the PC I'm using but they're there All that, just not much real estate on this screen. So there it is, done. So Lazarus, uh, 
can compile to all these different platforms though as Jim said the uh, B709 for application pretty much has Windows baked into it uh, I'm not sure at all what it would take to make it work on these other platforms but it would be rather cool wouldn't it to uh, compile a COBOL program on a virtual 1960s mainframe on a smartphone <laughs> that'd be pretty cool I think but uh, I don't know how possible it is now I don't want to start any heated debates about which language is best but I just want to make a point so if you've grown up thinking that the only way to program a computer is using C or something that looks like it such as Java uh, it's, it's uh, I've noticed lots of allegedly new languages still seem to keep a lot of the look and feel of C uh, but if you think that's how computers have to be programmed I, I strongly urge you to have a look at this I cannot stress this enough do yourself a favor get into this have a play of it learn how to use it and find out what it can do for you I can unqualifiedly guarantee you will not be disappointed you'll find yourself suddenly in a world free from having to worry about case sensitivity make files header files guards lack of type checking buffer overruns excessive punctuation clumsy pointer syntax clumsy hexadecimal notation unwanted octal interpretations arrays in indexed from zero only and void cannot stress it enough do yourself a favor play with Lazarus that's it hope you enjoy if you like please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you later